Hey everyone, and welcome back to part 21 of Let's Clone a Pokemon game series. Now, it's been a while. I've been in Activision the past year, and I've been focusing on some mobile games now that I've been laid off of work. But I figured since so many people have requested it that I would get back into the swing of making these Pokemon tutorials. Now, I did have an error before that was messing me up, and I could not figure out what the issue was for the index being out of range, and it was as simple as monster equipped, I didn't have that set to 4. For some reason I thought that would automatically um, transfer over the the amount in the array over to there, but it didn't. So I just changed that to 4 to fix it. So if anybody else is getting an error um, that's indexed out of range, and you've done the previous tutorials, that might be the issue. Or maybe it's just me. I don't know. <laughs> well, in this tutorial, we're going to keep it very simple again, just to start off. Um, just to get back into the swing of things, I'm going to be covering how to just do a quick turn-based system to where we can attack, our monster can attack, and then we can attack again. And it'll just jump back and forth in an infinite loop, pretty much. So eventually, we do want to change it. So... Um, we actually do an attack, a specific attack, and whether we take HP away from that monster or not is calculated by that. But there's a lot more variables that we have to throw into that equation, so we'll just keep it very simple for right now. And uh, I ended up coding this before and recording it, but it took way too long, so I'm just going to go back over what I was doing. So I went into the main script, and this is where we generate our enemy and set up the combats and everything like that. But anyways, I created a new variable for turn. Now, for turn equal, for turn zero, so for if the int equals zero, it's going to be our player's turn. You could also use a bool for this if you want to, but you don't have to. But it's just easier for me to keep track in this way. So zero is our player's turn. Turn one is our enemy turn. So after we attack, it's going to be our enemy's turn, and we're just going to wait for them to attack and vice versa and just jump back and forth. So, pretty much, I went down, let's see, to my attacks. So, in this piece of code, it actually goes through and generates our different attacks, our four different attacks that we have, that we can actually use. Um, monster equipped. This is actually our monster attack, so we're going to have to create our own in the future, but I guess this works for now, I guess. This will probably be our actual monster using their attack, but for now we're just going to be using this as our player attack, but we'll change this up in the future. So, pretty much, um, if turn equals zero, so if it's our turn, which it automatically defaults to zero, we're going to be calling player attack for whichever ability that we clicked. Now we're going to be, like I said, yeah, changing that to whichever attack that we used, but for now it's just going to be very generic, just getting it set up, so player attacked. Down here you'll need to create another function called player attacked and enemy attacked. Now for our debug.log we're just going to state that okay we click something and our player attacked and then we want to switch it over to turn one which is our enemy turn. Now the reason we're switching this is so soon is so you know that we can't use our a bunch of attacks so we can't click a million times to, you know, use a bunch of attacks at once, it automatically switches over to one. But we do have a little bit of leeway here. So when we call our enemy attacked, there's a yield wait for seconds here. So we, if we called an animation, let's say here, like call animation for like our, our Pokemon attack, then, then um, we can give a two second leeway for that enemy to go and attack before you know our enemy chooses which attack they want to use and then calls their animation and then switches over so they have a little bit of leeway too there and the only way this is like I said the only reason this is set up is just so you can't use multiple attacks at once so it should jump back and forth between the t or not back and forth it should call from here go into here, go into here, and then cancel out, and we'll have to click this again to go back through the loop. And I'll show you guys real quick through the console how this is set up. Now, like I said, this is a very basic tutorial. We're, we'll get into the more advanced stuff, but just to get back into the swing of things, 
we're just setting it up this way. Okay, so we have entered combat. This is how we had it set up before. And we'll click that attack. Player attacked. It'll wait two seconds. Oh. And scroll through and enemy attacked. And then we get our, our attack again. And so we can keep just switching and selecting different attacks and whatnot. So I believe for a our uh, actual attacks. So we'll have to set up like our actual inventory and then the attacks for our monster, the attacks for the enemy monster, and get these actual attacks working. I think I might actually go and create a separate script containing all the different attacks and whatnot and then times the attack power by you know what what level your Pokemon is and whatnot and calculate that all in because I've been thinking of how to actually set up this attack system without making it completely confusing and it might be easier just to have you know an entire script dedicated to every single attack in the game that every single monster could potentially use and then depending on what their base stats are and what their base abilities are and you know what their weaknesses are we can calculate that all in through just number crunching and whatnot so yeah stay tuned for future tutorials and hopefully the next one will be a little more advanced